So Ali, if we're talking about life-changing events, what specifically do we mean? So in my world, a life-changing event is a period of time where a client circumstances are dramatically altered. Mm -hmm. So let's think about maybe marriage, mm -hmm. birth of children, yeah. uh, maybe a windfall, but not all life-changing events are positive. So clients can be affected negatively by death, ill health, and also by divorce. Okay, so some of those events are happy events, others not so much, but what are the impacts? So let's talk about the happy events to okay. start off with. That's happy events such as marriage, the birth of children, and as we know, children are a lifelong commitment, mm. especially when you consider schooling and university costs. Yeah, yeah. So parents and grandparents may be wondering how they can budget for such a large, um, a large amount of capital expenditure mm. when it may be so far in the future. Yeah. And this is when we need to talk about it and factor it into the wealth plan. It's so true. They get more expensive as they go along, don't they? Unbelievable. Now, divorce, obviously, you mentioned. Huge um, event that can be very tumultuous for people. Some people might say it's a happy event, <laughs> others not so much, and it can be really, really unsettling. So I suppose that is one of the key ones. Of course, and with any type of change, mm. there comes a, a certain amount of financial vulnerability. Yeah. And I think this is when we need to speak to our clients the most, making sure that uh, they can still afford the objectives that they that they put into their wealth plan at the very start, mm -hmm. um, and just to make sure that they feel comfortable with their financial future. Okay, yeah, and let's deep dive a little bit into what this support looks like. So Hugh, tell me a bit more about your role. Sure, so um, I look after a, a, a fair number of uh, divorce clients, mm. and um, divorce clients, they come to you at a period of uh, great vulnerability, mm. um, upset you know perhaps lack of confidence and trust in their lives sure so it's it's key to form a, a good relationship from the start and understanding listen to what their their needs and requirements are you know quite often they'll say will I have enough money for the future mm. you know, I don't have the income I used to have in the past and if they haven't been used to dealing with the finances of the household then there'll be a, a vulnerability there, as well as sure. all the other emotions that they're having to go through at the same time. Yeah. So um, if I think of a couple of examples, you know, I've, been, I've accompanied some clients to view new properties because they're starting out in life. Um, they're having to you know, find a, a new home for themselves and maybe the children as well. Mm. Um, also been to, to buy cars for them as well and, and even some furniture at, at one point. Whatever it takes for the particular client and the sensitivities involved, then we're happy to do. And, uh, and, and that's how it's a very bespoke personal service mm. that, that we offer and provide. Um, and, and it's key in, in a period in the life of great change, transformation, vulnerability, uh, mixture of emotions. Mm. And we need to reassure that we're there for the longer term to um, basically help them at that period yeah. and for the future as well. So yeah. it's, uh, you know, it, it dovetails in with doing a, a wealth plan and all those financial planning requirements that, that we're able to cover for them as well. It sounds like you really go the extra mile. At a time, I've been through it myself, it can be very daunting. Yeah. You know, there's so much to think about, so I'm sure that sort of added support is uh, very, very welcomed. Sure. Um, so we've talked at length on past shows about the importance of wealth planning and the multitude of benefits that come with that. But for somebody who's almost starting again, some life event has happened. Is it a case of, OK, scratch the old plan, we're starting again, or is it more sort of tweaking? Well, some clients would have a wealth plan in place. Some, some clients would even have two wealth plans in place to cover certain eventualities. But if a client didn't have a wealth plan in place, that wouldn't be a problem because mm -hmm. we, would, we would sit down with them and we would go at their speed and we'd comprehensively um, do a cash flow modelling exercise as part of the, of the wealth plan. And we would be able to demonstrate to them very clearly, very transparently, mm. how their future was going to look and how much money they were going to have uh, for the rest of their lives, how they could budget on that. Mm -hmm. And then we'd be able to assist them with, with managing that money and uh, looking to the future. Yeah. So that provides a lot of comfort to, to clients that are going through 
periods of huge stress and anxiety at that time. Okay, so if you're talking about planning for the future and from the outset, are we talking, for instance, right, we're going to get engaged, I've got a lovely dinner planned, I'm going to do a romantic proposal, here's the ring, here's the wealth plan. <laughs> like, where does that fit in? <laughs> well, I don't think we want the wealth plan to appear. As part of the dinner? Most definitely not. There's uh, nothing romantic about talking about wealth and money. But uh, joking aside, the wealth plan and your financial future should most definitely be discussed before the exchange of any rings. Okay. Um, the reason for this is that uh, clients can have very different views on wealth and their future. Um, if we look at an example where one client may want to gift all of their money to charity, uh, very much um, into philanthropy, where we might have another client, um, where they're together, where there's a modern family. And that client wants to gift money to children from a previous relationship. So the two necessarily don't go hand in hand. Mm. Nothing to say they can't have separate wealth plans, but it definitely does need to be discussed. OK, so iron all of these things out before the big day. That makes sense to me. So I imagine you come across sort of interesting situations quite a lot. Do you have any other examples of where perhaps people might not have foreseen things or things might be difficult? What we see quite frequently are clients who have been very successful in their careers. They've built successful businesses and then they exit and they're left with a huge windfall. Now, the very nature of their personalities, if they've worked in the business and yeah. perhaps neglected their finances, they're left with this amount of money that they've not even planned what to do with. Right. And this is where we can help. We will sit down and listen. Mm. work out what they need to do mm -hmm. in order for that money to last them the rest of their lifetime. Yeah. So we will show them what their money looks like now, mm. what it will look like in the future, and they can make informed decisions from day one. Yeah, fantastic. What about you? Yes, I can think of um, an example of clients that actually they have amassed you know, a good amount of wealth over a number of years, uh, but they're looking at it through different eyes. Yeah. And in the relationship, one party maybe, you know, ha have certain plans that the other one doesn't have. <laughs> so we'll be, we'll be very diplomatic in terms of how we discuss those aspects with the client, mm -hmm. dovetail it into their wealth plan, mm -hmm. so that, that both parties achieve the, the goals and, you know, the objectives that they're looking for. So, yeah, yeah certainly, sometimes there, there, there's... Uh, the, the, Is there awkward moments? The, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, we always manage to smooth through the yeah. awkward moments yeah. but through communication. And sure. it's all about communication, relationship, yeah. um, and understanding what their needs are and, and, and you know, discussing those with them, with yeah. all parties. Mm -hmm. Just pure transparency. And yeah. then at the end, it, it all works out. Excellent stuff. Right, we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid. But before we do... Um, have you got any important takeaways? What's sort of the main message that you'd like to leave for the viewers? Well, I would say the most important thing is to have trusted advisors, whether that's your private banker, your lawyer, your tax advisor, mm. accountant. You just need to have those trusted... For me, it's my hairdresser <laughs> as well. Yeah, I mean, all of those people too, but... Yeah. <laughs> I'll add Who, them. Whoever it is, <laughs> if you're a trusted advisor and you have a great relationship with them, that's what it's all about. Yeah. It's all about the relationship that, uh, that you, yeah. you, you've developed over the years. We, we, we all, like you say, we all do it yeah. in every aspect of our life. Yeah. And particularly when something's as important as, as finance Absolutely. and wealth planning and wealth management, that's, that's particularly important. So that's yeah, I'd say- As you've highlighted, at, at very important points in people's lives. You do want that trust, don't yeah, you? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Would, you, would you back that up? Would you concur? Most definitely. Trust your advisors. Keep in touch so that we can keep your wealth plan up to date. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All very valuable information. Thank you, Ali and Hugh.